I use this craft paper. But you don't have to. You can use this. This came out of packaging, shoes, the garbage, and this works just as well. Anything that is relatively thin that you can rip like that, that will stick to itself when you put PVA glue on it. This is also relatively thin, like that. Uh, pretty kind of manipulable <laughs> and easy to use. I use cardboard, uh, this thin one, and the thick honeycomb cardboard. I also use that and this. I use this when I'm building up the sculpture because it's cheap and it's easy. And I use this as the final coat because it's beautiful and it takes paint and stain really, really well. I use a rag, I make it damp, I hang it here by myself so when I'm working I can uh, clean my fingers on there. I use a scalpel. Sometimes I use these sculpture spatulas. This is a box of surgical blades. This is what they look like. I'm very careful with these now. And I use this. Brushes. And this is for oil paint, but what I do is I put water in here and I attach my brushes so they're just sticking into the water so they never dry out. I make plaster molds. But you don't have to. You can build directly on styrofoam. You can drill, build directly on wood. You can make a metal armature and build directly on a metal armature. I use threaded rod because I like the way that I can attach the uh, PVA paste to the threaded rod and then stick the threaded rod into a base and screw it right down. You can use screws, nuts, bolts, you can sand it, you can burn it, you can do whatever you want to do with it. It's really incredibly amazing. I'm 59 and I wish that I would live to 159 so that I could learn how to do everything that I can think of with paper. Today I'm gonna to show you how I work with those materials building this sculpture called The Fall and the Rise. And I'm using paper paste, which I showed how to make in video number nine. Here I'm adding paper paste to the face where I wanna change the lips. I wanted to add eyelashes. I wanted to add a little bit of hair in the front. I use a brush, my fingers, and I find that sometimes it's easier to work a little bit and let it sit for a little while. That's partly why I have so many pieces that I'm working on at once. Something is always having to dry, but it doesn't take very long for this thin layer of paper paste that I'm putting on. Something to remember is that the little pieces of paper do have a thickness. Oftentimes I just use little pieces of paper to change the form, to build up, because with three or four little pieces, you can actually get a sixteenth of an inch of change. People ask if the sculptures are of me, and yes, I do use my face and my body to figure out the anatomy or the movement, but I use my body on all of them, not just the ones that look more like me, and there are many, many that don't look very much like me at all. I think it's a great way to work, to use your own body, because paying a model is really expensive. Getting a model in is sometimes difficult. I think a lot of people who work with the figure have this kind of issue. I think there's a lot of value for a sculptor in working with your own body, if that's the kind of work that you want to do. I hope this helps you do sculpture on the cheap using paper, PVA, glue, and your own body. You don't really need much more than that. Emmy says like and subscribe, and she likes comments almost as much as she likes bones.